Yeah. Okay, good. Now to Giamarco. You've been using Medistim a long time, perhaps one of our longest users. When you started doing cabbage surgery, what did you have available to you for quality control and checking for flows? Uh, you mean at the beginning of my at, practice? At the beginning or, of your practice. Or, yeah. Uh, I didn't have anything. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, we did not have any method to check the anastomosis. We didn't have any method uh, to assess the quality of our job. And uh, we started to have something in 1996. Okay. And the first equipment was a laboratory instrument. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, there was no display. There was just uh, a trace, just uh, paper. And there was uh, a small instrument with uh, uh, a sign, a signal uh, about uh, the forward flow or the backward flow. This was the only thing we had available at that time. So did you rely on this equipment at that time or was it sort of experimental and were you just keeping an open mind to its possibilities to actually be a valuable tool? I, I should tell you that the uh, history of the intraoperative graph verification is something fascinating because we began using a true laboratory instrument and technology developed so fast making available for surgeons uh, more and more uh, precise instruments even more and uh, from uh, the original equipments we are now uh, leading almost uh, something very close to perfection because we we as we have available uh, flow measurements and uh, imaging so we may be close the circle mm -hmm. now um, when you when you started using our device and we didn't have a clear understanding of what the endpoints were. You know, you talk about the and the range of endpoints that we have now. How did you say you approached its use? Did you approach it clinically or did you approach it scientifically? Both of them. I mean that if you talk about the practice, you definitely need to take a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, if we uh, observe the clear volume of uh, uh, likely functioning grafts, uh, we were happy of that. But the problem was when we did, dealt with uh, uh, very very small mean graft flows or very uh, quite IPIs in the presence of a small coronary artery, uh, a small vessels just to vascularize, uh, sometimes with a vein. So in these cases, we uh, we took the advantage. We we took the advantage to have a flow measurement device, uh, so reducing the area of uh, uncertainty. But we couldn't be 100% sure that that anastomosis was functioning. So this was a work in progress. As, yes, it was a work in more progress. More and more data came. So, for instance, you and you have come to understand the endpoints to be different than other people might be comfortable with. For instance, you like a P PI of three, others will accept a PI of five. Um, what's your message to the world who says, if I get a five, uh, the message, even on an artery, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. the message is this one. Uh, it's undoubtedly that if you publish uh, a, a group of patients, a popu patient population, uh, talking about a PI, by five as a cutoff value, uh, you need to be trusted, obviously. Uh, so the question is a good one. Why this wide range? Because probably it, it belongs to different size of coronary arteries in different populations in different parts of the world. Uh, so uh, that's why probably uh, the approach is the same because of flow measurement, but the, the data and the cutoff values could be different. Population specific. Yes, yeah. could be. Could okay. be. Could be. Yeah. Yes. So the Kietians. We published three. in yeah. 2000 in 2006 yeah. uh, cutoff values concerning mean graph flow by 50 milliliters per minute, and concerning the PI, we published a cutoff uh, of three. Yeah. Uh, 
But in other experiences, uh, mean graph flow and cutoff are different. But I heard that uh, someone of the authors who published those uh, seemingly high cutoff values uh, concerning PI, they are maybe setting a bit down this level. Uh, being close nowadays by four okay. or something like this. Okay, so they're seeing things differently. Um, in other parts of the world, surgeons have a different relationship, let's say, with, with flow measurements than in other parts of the world. This, some surgeons might use our device and they will find a value that's over five, that's seven, eight, or nine. And they'll say, well, I expected that high value because I have a very poor outflow bed or I have a very sick patient with very poor targets. Do you compromise your endpoints based on the health of your patient? Uh, the answer to this question is much complicated. I mean that, in my opinion, the target should be to work in a team, the so-called hard team. The, uh, the, the indication to graft a vessel or not to graft it should come from a laboratory study. I mean that the cardiologist who works in a cath lab should measure the perspective of revascularization of a, a single vessel, for example, a specific vessel. I mean that uh, if you find, if you can measure the fractional flow reserve, for example, you can state if a graft, uh, if a coronary artery is to be grafted or not, has to be grafted or not. And this reflects into the surgical choice and ultimately on the results of the surgery. So I mean that we should go to the surgeon, should go to the OR, with the specific and precise idea about which vessel is going to be gra is going to be grafted or not, uh, this is uh, uh, probably one way to uh, increase to improve the results. Okay. Uh, in in our estimation, some grafts you have to bypass. If you have an, uh, an included LAD, that this needs to be. Bypassed. Um, and I wonder if this is a measure, an, an, an incidence of confidence. I mean, at some point in your use of transit time flow, you developed confidence in the numbers to the point where you accepted these as being accurate, reliable, and predictive of outcomes. How long did it take you to get to that feeling that I now can really trust my TTFM flow data? So that I'm because not going to say it's the patient, it's the, yeah. it's the procedure uh, or the technique. Scientific, the scientific research led us to, uh, to say that there are some cutoff values to be respected, but a cutoff value is not a fixed point. Uh, it is something that could be kept in mind, uh, considering that a graph that shows a very high flow and very low PI is definitely well functioning. Mm -hmm. But as you approximate to cutoff values of mean graph flow and PI, you decrease the, pre the precision of the prediction about the patency of the graph. Mm -hmm. So as you approximate to those values, you need something more to assess the patency of the anastomosis. And that's why, in my opinion, imaging is definitely helping in assessing the patency intraoperatively, as the transit time flow measurement could be in assessing and in predicting the fate of the graft late postoperatively. Mm -hmm. Talking about imaging and just the future of quality assessment, uh, do you think we're there, or do you think we, there's still technology or techniques or uh, uh, other uh, evolutionary uh, events that have to happen in order to continue to improve outcomes. What, what, yeah, where, yeah. where are we? Are we there? Are we yes, done? Yes, and we are going to. Yeah. 
uh, we are in a, in a good position uh, uh, to reach the goal. So we increase the accuracy of the intraoperative graph verification. We increased and we led the accuracy using transit time flow measurement and imaging, high resolution imaging. We led the accuracy almost by one. It's a good goal. Uh, where should we go? Uh, one improvement could be the chance to reconstruct three-dimensionally the shape of the anastomosis and the shape of the coronary artery. This is possible probably uh, just uh, changing the software or making something on the software. And this could be a very nice improvement mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to say to your peers out there who don't see the world of patency the way you do? No, I, I just want to want to tell something for young young surgeons, young generations. They need to prepare to another kind to make surgery, uh, at least coronary surgery. The importance of uh, self-control, the importance of uh, intraoperative graph verification uh, is as important as an auto-education for surgeons. I mean that as you control the grafts, you educate yourself and you educate yourself on the way of perfection, I should say. Mm -hmm. I mean, you become more and more um, expert, more and more accurate in doing the anastomosis. Because if you have the control, the intraoperative control as a target, that's the mirror of your job. And if you mirror yourself, you will be, uh, you will uh, look definitely more and more handsome, you know? Yeah. And, so, and, and take feedback wherever you can get it's, it. It's good feedback, yes. Whether it's from people yes. or devices.